Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about my network in the van. Now, here is the funny thing. You talk to a lot of people, they're like, you know, Wi-Fi, my, you know, Wi-Fi wi wireless networks. You can do piggybacking off your phone. There's a lot of these other little options that you can do. I'm going to have a separate video about how to do all these things on the Van Life channel at Tux Traveler. So have a look over to that channel if you've not already. I will try and get uh, both of these videos out today. No promises, but that's what the, the goal is at least. And uh, what we want to look at today, though, is how specifically am I running my network interfacing with Linux in the van for the most part? And it works very well. So effectively, my home network here is the same way it was when I had the apartment. I did take off the, um, the Linksys router, which was basically a wireless extender. Because PFSense, uh, I had that because PFSense is not particularly good at wireless networks. However, um, in the van, I don't need wireless quite as much. So I just rely on the PFSense one when I can because everything else is very close, very self-contained. And I do have Ethernet ports in the van accessible. So first, let's go ahead and have a brief look at the diagram. So let's walk through this. You can see that the starting point is down there on the lower left with the LX40 cellular modem. Now these branches have, uh, you can get a modem or a router, you can get these with or without wireless. Since I want to focus on security and privacy, I explicitly did mine without wireless so that the only way to get any internet off of the cellular line is to be plugging directly into the ethernet port on the device. This is going directly into my hardened PFSense router. So you can see that next. Now PFSense router has the wireless port. Yes, it is called the FBI surveillance van. <laughs> yeah, just fun. In fact, I think I scared somebody with that the other day. I was recording out late at night in a kind of a, uh, a backwoods type area and I see, I see a car come up. It's like 1130 or no, 11 o'clock ish, somewhere around there. And the lady's like, I just want to make sure there's no effing cops around here. I'm like, well, no police. And, uh, Within three, five minutes, she was gone. I'm wondering if she like, FBI surveillance van. Wait, 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 wait. I'm out of here. I think she wanted to do some math or something. I don't know. Um, but uh, beneficial, beneficial. The PSense does have three Ethernet output lines. I put one of these out to the NAS. This is my... Um, I did the whole video on building this on the Raspberry Pi 4. This is a file server and this is movies, pictures, media, all these types of things. Now I wanted to connect the two spare, uh, the two spare ports to the NAS and the Kodi box because if all I'm doing is watching a movie, I don't need the switch on or anything else. All I need is the NAS box and the Kodi box on. So that's why I plugged those two there. The last line on PFSense, you can see from the diagram, goes into the gigabit switch. The gigabit switch, of course, uh, gigabit, it spreads out internet to everything else. We have the one ethernet port plugged in here. We also have the Linux Mint computer, which is the Ryzen 5 production PC. We have the media PC, which is the one I typically use. That guy is right up here. You probably can't see it from there, but here's a close up. And that one runs Endeavor OS. I use that one for YouTube, Kodi. All my emails can be checked over there. All my password lists are over there. So it's an all purpose computer that is very small micro scale. Uh, and that's actually plugged directly into the DC line. I'll have to do a separate video on that another time. We also have this plugged into two other Raspberry Pis. One of these is the ISP config, um, which is what I use to have a server offline. Uh, so if I know I'm gonna be going somewhere without internet for a while and I'm working on a project, I can still do all of the interfacing with a full-fledged PHP server, build it offline, and then simply deploy it to the internet when I am back onto a um, uh, into uh, civilization. Uh, ISP config is built on Debian, so that is actually just a Debian web server. And I actually can build another Wi-Fi network into that if I wanted to. Um, it's something I have not ruled out, but it is not something that I've explicitly done right now. I might play around with that because that might be a better network than PFSense does. Mostly because PFSense is based on FreeBSD, which does not have very good wireless support um whereas um the raspberry pi 
does, and so it actually works pretty well last time I played around with it, but eh, I wiped the system that had that before, but I have the installation instructions on a separate video on how to build a Wi-Fi network, so maybe I'll do that again. The last computer is the Raspberry Pi that runs Manjaro. This is the Raspberry Pi 8, uh, 8 gigabyte. This runs Manjaro, and I do this for the majority of my web design work. This can run you know, the whole scope of managing the WordPress sites, we're managing Joomla sites, any other databasing, interfacing, it checks all my emails as well, also has all my passwords and things like that. Now, let's talk a little bit about how I'm feeding the internet into the system. I already talked about the LX40, uh, this is Sierra Wireless LX40. This individual box itself, this is designed for like IoT applications. It is the cheapest one in the market that still has a gigabit port itself. So if I get somewhere with super fast LTE internet that goes over 100 Mbps, I can feed that much into it. That's why I went with that one. There's other options like the Peplink. The Peplink has an advantage that it has a dual SIM card port and it is tooled to multiple different bands at the same time. So if you have a Verizon and an AT&T one in there, you tell it to check, it's going to pull from the internet from whichever SIM card gets the best data, and then it shuts the other one down. Mine doesn't do that, and a lot of the reason that would necessitate having two separate plans, which is already expensive. My plan is $160. It is through Verizon. Now, that one box that I have... You can tool this, uh, basically it's just a firmware update man released by the manufacturer. This is no third party thing. The manufacturer will give you the firmware that you can flash the firmware for Verizon or you can flash the firmware for AT&T or you can flash the firmware for T-Mobile. So you can use it on any chip set. I happen to be using mine with Verizon because in my experience traveling around the country as much as I already have, Verizon does get you the overall best coverage, particularly when you leave city centers. In a city center, it doesn't matter which one you're doing. If you're gonna be staying in city centers, it doesn't matter which one you're doing. But if you're leaving city centers, I did find that Verizon works the best. So this is actually connected with um, with a cellular antenna that's on the roof. This is not a boosting antenna. It just has like a five dB boost. It's not a significant boost, but it does give the cellular router the same type of signal inside the boxy van, which by the way, there is aluminum foil inside the walls. Yeah, there is, there is. Where's my hat? Um, but uh, yeah, it does actually uh, give you the signal because the antenna sits on top of the roof of the van. It pulls in the signal. It feeds it down through a series of wires. It's kind of a, on top of this cabinet here that you see. Feeds back down and then plugs that into the back of the modem. So then the modem is just feeds directly into the system. Now, I do use internet in a few other ways. I'll talk about that more on the other video that I'm doing for the Van Life channel. Uh, brief summary, uh, my Mint mobile phone allows uh, very good hotspot data. I use coffee shops, of course, with a VPN. Um, so there are a lot of other ways to do it. But this video here, I just want to show you how my internal network is all set up, basically just with a, a simple diagram to show you how it all is. And all this stuff is wired into the walls of this van, and it's quite incredible. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, stay tuned. Next week we will do a video on looking at the power consumption, how to calculate the amount of time a computer can be on with your given battery setup. So thanks for watching, guys. Go ahead and like the video if you liked it. Share it along to a lot of people. Get us out of that YouTube gulag. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.